Otherwise, what we'll do we'll have you sign is your we will start the MCSA frame simulator, and here's our frame sync here. Well, I can apply that. And then they remember, oh, well, I saw well, this when know, I was halfway through the process. How can I get back you know, there? You know, there isn't a legitimate way out of this because we're using the file interface rather than the shared memory interface. Uh, because right now, what I'm having Terry do is as he gets in a frame's worth of data. The spectrum, the polarity, and the power, along with the bend number that it, it, it's uh, going with. And how many? Everything we've learned in our modern studies of astronomy, of biology, of evolution of life, have showed that the steps which led to our being here, including our high technology using civilization, are completely normal steps in the evolution of a star and its planet. And therefore, the steps which led to our existence should have occurred in many, many places. And therefore, there should be many technology using civilizations in space channels at once. It takes the incoming energy and sorts it out into those 15 million channels and then a computer looks at the result to see if whether in any of those channels there are indications of the presence of a signal. If such indications are present it notifies an operator who takes over and then takes whatever steps are appropriate to determine what the origin of that signal is and of course in particular whether it is an intelligent signal of extraterrestrial origin. The goals of our project are to systematically search through the microwave region of the spectrum to attempt to find evidence of another technology out there by picking up radio signals that they may have generated in order to attract our attention or for their own purposes. NASA is interested in this project because it's interested in understanding the universe. And life as we know it is a planetary phenomenon and from what our scientists tell us is a natural part of the universe. And so we're just looking for other evidences of the outcome of the laws of physics and chemistry and just trying to understand our place in the universe better. Oh, not only NASA is interested in looking out there to find other 
technology and therefore other intelligence. But everyone is interested, and we've been, as, we've been interested since as long as we've had recorded history. The ancient Greeks and Romans used to wonder about who lived up there. Um, we used to ask the question to the priests and philosophers, for, and we took whatever answers they gave us. Right now, NASA's interested because scientists and engineers actually have the technology to make an experimental test, and we may be successful in answering this age-old question. If our, if our equipment finds a signal and then tells us about it, we'll spend a lot of time trying to verify that this is really what we think it is. It's really a signal that's coming from some place on the sky that moves the way the stars do. Um, and then after we've done that verification and, if possible, an independent confirmation, then we'll tell the world. And we'll tell the world as quickly as we can and as openly as we can. And we'll, we'll make all the data from the discovery site and the subsequent verification uh, available to the public or to other scientists so that they can make their own decisions. We know so little about the potential out there for extraterrestrial technologies that we're actually trying to search simultaneously in two different ways. One is that we pick out locations like our own. We find stars that are nearby that are very much like our sun and uh, we spend a lot of time trying to get um, the weakest signals that might be coming from these nearby stars. Uh, this is because a star like our sun has an Earth, at least in one case, that we know about. And so we look for similar locations. The other way we search is to say, that might be right. We might be right in guessing that it's a solar type star that we want, but it might be the right star might be a long way away. It doesn't show up in our catalogs. So, but it might have a really strong technological signal that we could detect if we were only to look in that direction. So we do an all-sky survey at the same time. And we use smaller telescopes so that we can move them rapidly across the sky, covering all directions. We never stay at any one direction and any frequency very long, so the signal intrinsically has to be stronger for us to find it. But we could find it that way where we might miss it if we only looked at the thousand nearest stars. 